Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course. And it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stores. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code VRUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. You guys there? We're here. Yay. I'm here. <laughs> Good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah. Good. How's it going? You know, it's all right. Um, somehow, surviving. Yeah. Who's drinking an iced coffee with a straw right now? Oh, man. <laughs> I tried to get one sip in before I continued. <laughs> that was so good. Wow. I haven't bought a coffee since quarantine started. Yeah, I was wa- I was watching a movie where somebody was drinking a like to-go coffee and I got nostalgic. <laughs> yeah. Can you go buy coffee, pick up, order online, anything like that, wherever you are? First, where are you, JJ? I'm in New York and I could do that, but I'm like really afraid of any unnecessary risks. So um, I'm trying not to bring any outside goods into the house and into my mouth unless they're essential. And unfortunately, coffee from Starbucks didn't make the cut for essential. But you haven't stopped drinking coffee, have you? No, no. I I have okay. I have my own means of making it at home. How about you, Hannah? Where are you and what's your coffee situation? So, I am in Amherst, Massachusetts mm. at my boyfriend's parents' house. Is your and, boyfriend Thurston Moore? Um, no comment. Is your boyfriend Jay Mascus? Uh, no comment. Yes, I knew. It. I know them both. And they told me. They told me the same thing. They told you they were my boyfriends. No comment. <laughs> Touche. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm. I'm here. Um, I am trying my best to get my caffeine intake because my boyfriend's parents. It's hard to say this out loud. They drink Folgers. Hmm. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like like the worst. It's freeze dried coffee. It's still the most basic. Like, <laughs> it's coffee. barely arabica beans. It's mostly oh, free dried re- freeze dried chemicals, yeah. So I've been trying my best to go out and buy coffee beans, which I've deemed an essential um, errand for myself. So I, yeah, now I'm starting to drink some local coffee, which is going better, but my coffee situation has been hard. Also, I'm in Massachusetts where people think that Dunkin' Donuts is the best coffee ever. So I'm, yeah, I'm not fitting in. Yeah. There are some good instant coffee out there now. I just got some from a place called, uh, coffee manufactory and it's really good. It does the trick. So yeah, I'm making it work. I have like four cups of coffee a day um, because coffee is <laughs> my greatest joy. Yeah. <laughs> so somehow still sleeping like 16 hours every night. 
That's we're good. Doing, we're doing well. You know, we're doing well. Four cups of coffee and sleeping 16 hours. Are you doing push-ups? <laughs> Something is seriously as, wrong. <laughs> as a matter of fact, um, the family that I'm staying with has two Olympic athletes in it. So they do insane workouts all the time. And I mm. have been forced to work out as well, which I think is why I'm requiring so much coffee and so much sleep. Right. I'm having a very unique quarantine experience, I'd say. Um, JJ, how's your last, let's say, week been at home? What's your day-to-day like? Um, I'm trying to keep busy with Overcoat's work. And Hannah and I have been writing some new music and kind of sending it back and forth as like voice memos and garage band files. So that's been nice. But yeah, mainly I just pretend that I have shit to do all day so that I don't like lose my mind. I've been doing some painting. I've been dabbling in some furniture making. Whoa, tell me about furniture making. Well, I, I've been making these little end tables out of wood and then hand making these mosaic tiles out of concrete and the tiles sit on top of the end table. And yeah, so I've decided that that's my passion right now. Um, so I'm, I've made one and I'm now starting on the second one. Uh, how how are your guys' families doing? Or close friends, immediate family, close friends? Chosen family. Yes. Um, everybody is pretty good. Family's healthy. Uh, everybody I know is going insane, but um, but all of our basic needs are fulfilled. So I'm very grateful for that. Same, same with me. I'm staying at my parents' house right now, and it's kind of a full house, and they both are teachers, and my boyfriend, who's also staying here, is also a teacher, and they all have, they all teach their Zoom lectures, like, every day, and so it's basically like a minefield walking around the house because you just have to avoid all the classes that are happening. Um, right. But everybody, same, same situation. Everybody here is healthy, which is really lucky. And a lot of, a lot of bickering with my parents. I've basically reverted to being a child, um, <laughs> which I think is happening to people who are with their parents right now. Yeah. But, yeah. And my brother, who normally would be in New York, got stranded in Salt Lake City, Utah, with his girlfriend's parents, which Mm -hmm. is a blessing and a curse, because obviously he's stuck out there and, you know, separated from our family. But if he was here, it would be six people living in a two-bedroom apartment. So it's, yeah, it's kind of hectic. My situation here at my house is three people. Yeah. Z- zero teachers, but we yeah. have to homeschool. I'm oh the worst God. teacher. <laughs> yeah, how's that going? It's terrible. It's not terrible. It's it's difficult. The greatest thing about it is being able to see him. His light bulb come on for various things like pronouncing a word and stuff like that. This might be a cool opportunity for you to make your own curriculum and decide, <laughs> you know, history of government. Are we going to do history of the best bands of all time? Right. Yeah. You can really take control of your kid's reality. So that's kind of. Exciting. Right. Change and history. Dangerous. Are yeah. you suggesting that I change history? I, I think that it might be fun. Right. The overcoats, not the Rolling Stones. Yeah. (laughs) That's good. Lesson one. (laughs) Lesson one, the overcoats. Um, In the last week, what has been one of the most striking, interesting, stupid or sad thing you've seen in the media? 
or social media? The most recent one is Hannah's meme she sent me from Shithead Steve. And it's Mm -hmm. a a photo of a duck kind of covered in like green mud grass. And then the meme says, me coming into my parents' bedroom at 3 a.m. to tell them that I threw up. This this is funny in its its own right, but it's it's more relevant to us because we had a little bit when we were on tour with you in January. You yeah. weren't aware of the bit. <laughs> no, but I'm going to be now. <laughs> yeah, yes. oh, you're going to be. Um, where we would just take turns in the tour van saying, Mom, Dad, I threw up. And then we just go around and and do it until we'd all done it and all laughed at each other doing it. And that was the bit. (laughs) So that really brought back the nice memories. (laughs) That's nice. That's also to me, that's a, that might be, that's a, that's a fun game to play in the van. Yeah. If we ever get in a van again. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Um, My favorite thing is I've somehow ended up on a listserv of like dad jokes about quarantining. Mm -hmm. So I'll just share a few of my favorites. Okay. Um, Until further notice, the days of the week are now called this day, that day, other day, someday, yesterday, today, and next day. Um, Here's another one. Um, On the bright side, I'm no longer calling this shelter in place. I am an artist in residence. Here's another. These are bad. Um, 2020 is a unique leap year. It has 29 days in February, 300 days in March, and five years in April. <laughs> I like that. My favorite one is, after years of wanting to thoroughly clean my house but lacking the time, this week I discovered that wasn't the reason. <laughs> That's oh, really man. accurate. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Do you have a do you have a band text thread? We mostly text each other, Joe. Okay, either of you said anything astonishing to each other in the last week? Um, well, recently Hannah and I sent each other 16 photos from when we recorded our album. Um, oh. And some of them are quite astonishing simply because our hair is at such a weird length in some of these yeah. photos that it's like 1960s British housewife, like awful, awful, awful photos. There's also a, a little Photoshop of us as trolls, which is nice. Yeah. Hey, have you guys had any um, shows canceled, tours canceled yet? Oh, have yeah. We ever? Yeah. <laughs> Have we had oh. any tours not canceled? Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. but in all honesty, our headline tour was canceled. Um, it was supposed to be April 2nd through May 15th. So it mm-hmm. was meant to be happening right now. Um, but none of that is happening, unfortunately. Mm. And we were going to tour with you guys cold war kids again but that's definitely also not happening it's a mess yeah Yeah. it's not really a mess it's nothing now that's the problem there's no mess yeah there's zero mess yeah um when did or actually let's let's play a song okay let's let's bring this mood up i'm gonna play fire and fury I'd love if you did that. It's gonna. It's a really good song, but I, you know, for people who haven't heard it, they're gonna be psyched. I think that this is the song on the album that I can listen to the most because it feels uplifting and and relevant. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's, here it goes. Oh. For you, baby, won't you take me home tonight? Cause I can't stand these people. Oh, I've been thinking lately, the world has. 
doesn't know it is coming to an end. So just stop and say something. Do you see what I see? I've been fighting, but you're still at the party. Is this the part where you don't even know me at all? number when did you guys record it um i guess it would have been about a year ago we recorded our whole second album in la in spring of last year and that song was actually uh it was funny because hannah and i were adamant that it wasn't on the record um it didn't exist in that form originally it was like kind of pop demo that felt mm-hmm. very disingenuous and everybody like from our label and the producers we were working with were like oh my gosh this song is like your best song it's got to be on the album we were like this one sounds like s- terrible pop music and so we had to kind of trust the producers and flip the song and we made it into something that we could be proud of um, rather than this sort of very plastic original version that we had made with a different producer that we, I think, had negative, you know, memories of. Um, But we we turned it around, we re-recorded it, and it, yeah, it turned out to be like one of our favorites on the album. Um, And I don't think we could have predicted how salient some of the lyrics were going to be because we couldn't have predicted this global pandemic Uh, right yeah but a lot of this album is just like built for the apocalypse that we didn't know was coming and now we're here in it and 
and a lot of the songs are for some reason <laughs> really accurate um yeah, yeah that, that one especially i feel like the apocalypse was coming and was happening like whether or not corona was in the mix and corona's mm. just sped it up expedited it yeah so what's your next record gonna be like funny you should Apoc- ask <laughs> yeah it's gonna be like wally it's <laughs> our movie and and we're like coming out of the rubble yeah all right that's what we yeah. all want to hear um hey have you guys is there a song that you've heard in the last seven days maybe eight that you've listened to more than once yeah. or you know like something that was like you hadn't heard in a long time or something new i've been listening to the fiona apple album a bit as everyone yeah. has um yeah and that's also feeling really poignant because it kind of sounds like she was quarantining and like going insane in her house and just banging on stuff. Yeah. Um, what about you guys? Well, for me, definitely the Fiona Apple record. Yeah. I've been listening to um, this record called Oogum Boogum by Brenton Wood, which I was obsessed with years and years ago, and I just kind of started listening to it again. Well, I like that name. I'll have to check that out. Um, I listened to one song a a few times, and that was the first song from Sharon Van Etten's album, Remind Me Tomorrow. The first song on that record is I Told You Everything. Mm, I love that song. I've been listening to that quite a bit. It's really really beautiful. Um, I feel like it didn't really maybe get its time in the spotlight because because of you know comeback kid and 17 being on that album you know Mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah i've been i've really been liking that oh you know what's been lifting my spirits a lot is um this la artist named remy wolf who Maddie, our drummer, knows. She introduced us to Remy's music. It's like upbeat, like fun, little bit of hip hop kind of beats. And it's just really good. And her voice is awesome. And the songs are very catchy. I feel like it's been hard to listen to like a lot of slow music for me because I'm already in like a very reflective and somber mood most of the time and so when I listen to music it's it's to provide myself with the opposite and so I've I've been really liking Remy Wolf well I've got one more question for you both do you have any advice for people or suggestions for people to keep their their wits and their physical health or one or the other Um, I think the biggest thing that's helping me is just to take it day by day or even or week by week, really, because then you can have some like recurring things for structure. But the second I start to think about something that is further than a week away, I get really freaked out. So, yeah, my biggest advice is to just uh, take it slow and stay inside. And if you do both those things. Yeah, be in the present. Yeah. Yeah. I would also add two things. One, something I've been guilty of in the past few weeks is is really judging myself for either not being productive enough or not getting things done or, or getting too much done and being like really psycho about making things. And I think that the key is to not judge oneself about how you're spending your days or what you're doing and just breathing and staying safe and healthy is enough. And so breathing, Oh my God. Breathing. No, seriously. Like if you remember that you just have to breathe in and out, like you actually feel better. Like that that's I kind forgot. of your only, only task. Um, and obviously this comes with a grain of salt because we're in very like privileged positions where we have families that can support us and our work 
can sort of continue during this time. So I, I understand that saying like relax doesn't help everyone, but right. yeah. um, for people in positions similar to us, I think that that's been crucial for me. And the second thing is to remember that all things pass and that we will get through this and there will be a time when coronavirus is not the everyday normal and remembering that everything ends is has really been helping me to have hope and to feel okay in the moment that's the most hopeful thing i've heard in a while oh good yeah thanks np no problem and abbreviate and abbreviate your words yeah it it helps (laughs) We don't have time for the no and the, uh, the two syllables. The problem. I got no, nothing but time. <laughs> no time at all. <laughs> um, I'll let you both go. Thanks for your thanks for your time. I appreciate it. It's fun thanks talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Miss, miss you. you. Miss you guys too. It seems like yesterday we were it does. making the same jokes every day backstage over and over yeah. again. I'd do it again. Yeah, yeah, we should do it again. Let's do it again. I just saw some pictures of us in Austin saying bye. Oh. Uh, breaks yeah. my heart. I know. Um, okay, well, take care of yourselves, and thanks again. Um, we'll rock soon and talk sooner. That's nice. Yeah. Thanks. I like that. I've never said that before. That should be your sign-off every time. It might be instead of the drum set I'm sitting next to, which was my old idea. <laughs> I was going to start or playing drums both. from the China. Maybe both. Yeah. Again, thanks, and uh, let's let's rock soon and talk sooner. Hey, but um. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. You said, holy shit, you almost died, sharing a shot. Oh